Keyboard goes here. Microphone goes here. Okay. Good afternoon, Abnormals, and welcome back to the YouTube, the Ministry of Abnormality YouTube live broadcast. I am your host, O Abnormal, and today is Tuesday, April 11th of 2023. Welcome back to my show. In the chat room, I see we have Amal, and we, uh, and we have a Voltus. I'm sorry, I just, I just noticed something on my desk here. Wait, I need I need my drink. I forgot it. Oh, you can still see me. Hello. This is my fridge, which you cannot see. Okay. So, welcome back, Mao and uh, Voltus. Okay. Oh, ooh, sorry. I should mute Discord. I'll just leave it. Whatever. Okay, sorry. Uh, I was answering the message. Uh, how is it going? Well, um, it's been a it's been a fine week. It's been a fine week. Uh, we are in the uh, in the middle of finishing this cover, uh, which actually has a lot more going on in it than than it seems. Um, because right here where it is, it's missing the ship. And the background ships as well. So, so yeah, there is a lot more going on in this scene. Uh, what we're going to do today with this image is finish it up, polish some details, and we're going to organize the background. Because right now, the background has a little bit of an issue where um, there's too much going on in the background with all those ships. So we're going to reduce that to two ships. And then we're going to um, add some buildings and stuff like that to the background. Or maybe we'll add the buildings before and then add the ships. I think we're going to focus on the buildings after I finish polishing up the characters. Sabrina, hello! I, uh... Yes, I was going to say what Mao said, but he beat me to it. I saw the the art for the video game that you put in the, um, in the Discord, and, and I love it. Um... Uh, yeah, I, I love uh, what, what you put there. Um, how is it going? Uh, uh, how is that going? Okay. So, let's continue here. Oh, right, I was adjusting faces. Uh. Okay, so at, at least you get to openly talk about it now. Well, awesome. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? Or I, I don't really, I, I don't really know how to formulate that question, but is, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. How would I formulate that question? It's going well. We have most of the game polished. I'm on marketing duty for the next month, making promotional assets. But that sounds... I like making promotional stuff, don't you? That actually sounds pretty cool. I I would be 100% okay with making promotional stuff. Besides, I, I absolutely love like the concept the game has going on. Wait a second. Okay, why are you? Uh, 
That's odd. Oh, <laughs> I just have the wrong button. Uh, okay. So what I was doing uh, now was I was adjusting faces on this image. So let's get back to it. Let's continue adjusting these faces. I prefer the game making side over marketing. My boss gets too deep into market validation. It comes from a marketing background originally. So it's nonstop. Let's make this and see how it does. Yeah, I... I can see how that... I can see how that would, uh... Would be tiresome. Um... Nonetheless, I mean, considering the circumstances, what you've managed to do there looks amazing. So, you know, there, there is that. Wait, what? Okay, this ear just looks weird. Let's, uh... Let's polish it up. All those pieces were done in one day each. That's how fast he wants things pumped out. Oh yeah, I, I am familiar with that though, unfortunately. Um, speed does seem to be the curse of the artist. You know, we... we I sometimes wonder if it's the um, the curse of our job, you know, that we we got this awesome, fun job that we can do, but everybody's gonna want anything, everything in a hurry. Um, hello, Pew. How are you? How are you, beautiful? Hello. <laughs> He's right over there. So. <laughs> okay, let's see what other faces we can adjust here. Okay, so we got face number one. What other face did you identify in here? I see which one. Okay, let's see what we can do with these eyes. I'm guessing a little bit bigger. No, no, that I don't want. How about make them wider? No, 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 I don't want anything there. Maybe a little bit of tilt. That would be nice. Distance. Actually. No. Distance is fine. Nose height. Actually, yeah. Let's give him a bigger nose. Make it wider. I normally make my nose is very narrow. A little bit less of a smile. Less of an upper lip. A little bit more open. Uh, I'd be fine if my boss had a different mindset about the art. Don't worry about quality. We just want content right now. And when I turn my stuff in, he tears it apart for quality. That's just me going down the road of complaining again. Overall, I'm excited about this one. I think I think you can do both things, right? I I think you can. You you can like your job and be excited about what's happening in your job while at the same time having a few complaints i i don't i don't think that uh one thing excludes the other sebastian mejia yes it's a it's a very very interesting tool that uh photoshop has 
for adjusting faces and such. Um, the only problem that sometimes happens with this tool is that if the face in question is overly stylized, Photoshop may might not detect it. Right, like like Photoshop might not detect the face if the face is too is too stylized. So, for example, this lizard person, the like like these characters here, Photoshop is not detecting a face there, and also it's not very good at detecting. Um... No, actually, that's it. Other than that, it is a it is a brilliant tool. I, I've been using it quite a bit. Um... I don't think it it uh it compensates for bad anatomy, but what it does do is it's very useful for kind of may, maybe when you you know things you wouldn't consider right like like uh, uh changes to anatomy and stuff that you you wouldn't consider it kind of helps a little bit with with um. You know, adding like a little bit of variety and stuff like that to the faces we make. Uh, you know, like, oh, okay, well, no one never would have made a mouth that wide or stuff like that. That kind of. So I, I enjoy it a lot. And it kind of, it's kind of a great way to just add a little final bit of polish to whatever it is we're doing. Um, ever since the latest Photoshop update, Liquify crashes Photoshop every time. Not a necessary tool, but frustrating. Um, that was happening to me. It was also happening to, to Pew. It was happening with Camera Raw, right? And Liquify. But that was a, a couple of updates ago. Because to me, it was happening with Camera Raw, not with Liquify. But basically, uh, a couple of updates and uh, that was it. You know, it, it problem solved. Um, I think with Pew, the solution was the same. Just an update and that was it. Um, I also updated the video card. Uh, so that might also... So that maybe that helps too, uh, because normally Photoshop does use the video card for that. No, I was I was getting the same thing. Like when I would use Camera Raw, uh, what would happen is that it would apply the Camera Raw, but when I would close Camera Raw, like when I would accept the changes and close it it would freeze. It would apply the changes. I could actually even save and close Photoshop, but on screen, it would, it would freeze. It was really, really weird. So how is everybody's week going? What's everybody up to? Give me all the juicy, delicious details. Spill that tea. Well, oh, you got dredge. I've heard a lot about it. It does seem like your jam, though. It, it does seem like your jam of game. Definitely has got that vibe.
Besides posting Arnold singing poop, <laughs> I've read the GM of Shadowrun campaign. I did a. Uh, I did check out the uh, the sound of, of music. Um, Sabrina, I, w I was wondering, uh, I was wondering, did you, did, did you play Sable? I can't remember if you played it or not. Uh, besides posting Arnold singing, uh, preparing, uh, searching Pinterest for NPC pics, location pictures. Awesome. Got anything special planned for this one? Oh, Sabrina, you would love Sable. You would love Sable. It is... Visually, it's very, very, very relaxing. Uh, because it literally does look like a, like a game that was drawn by Mobius, right? Like, like they were going for that, and that's definitely what they got going on there. And it's also a no combat game. It's just an exploration game. Uh, it, it's very, very chill. I, I, I got it a couple of years ago when it came out, and I was just kind of hooked to it for... Uh, a couple of days, and that's it. You, you kind of just want to find everything there is to find in the game, and, and that's it. I highly recommend it. Hurry back, Mal. Yeah, and since it's a couple of years old, you'll probably get it on sale easy. I was reminded of it because yesterday I was checking out a game, but it's not out yet. Uh, that also looks like a Mobius painting. Uh, it's called, oh shit, I added it to my wish list yesterday, but I'd have to, I'd have to go check it out to remember what it was called. Wait, I can just, because they found it on a Discord, so I can actually check it out right now. So check out, uh, I, I'm not going to show it here, you know, because copyright and stuff, but look up on Steam, a game called synergy uh check out the trailer on steam for a game called synergy and it really looks like a mobius painting come to life i, I love it it's not out yet so you know
Oops. Okay, we want to... Uh, did we do any fun, anything fun over the weekend? Well, last week was actually um, Easter week here. So technically... Last week was like a huge vacation for a lot of people. Not us, you know, we're independents. So, you know, we don't really get vacations. Not that way, at least. Um, but the week itself was very different because, you know, I didn't have to go to the university, stuff like that. Um, so while I did work last week a lot, uh, one of the things we did do last week that was quite interesting is that we went to the movies three times last week. So the first time we went and saw Dungeons and Dragons, which was Thursday. Friday, we went and saw The Pope's Exorcist. And Saturday, we went and saw uh, Super Mario Bros. Um... And I am willing to talk about all three. If if anybody wants me to. Um, if anybody wants me to talk about those three movies, I I am I am ready and willing. Um Wait, did we go on Saturday or did we go on Sunday? We went on Saturday, right? Okay. Okay, so Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which I think we spoke about yeah. on Friday. Dungeons and Dragons. I I kind of agree one hundred percent with Sabrina's uh, review of Dungeons and Dragons in that it is cute. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it very much from the point of view of, you know, geeky D&D &D player that was getting all the references. Um, but, for example, Pew doesn't fall under that category, and she enjoyed it. So, you know, I don't think it was just for uh, uh, fun for D&D &D fans. You know, Pew enjoyed it, and she she's never played D&D. &D. Um... So yeah, I thought it was fun. Like we spoke last Friday, I think that uh, I, I enjoy that they definitely kind of leaned into the whole D and D part of it. That uh, I love that the movie didn't seem to be embarrassed about what it was because I, I think a lot of times it happens with with these movie adaptations of games and stuff like that. That you almost get the feeling that the movie's embarrassed. To be what it is, if that makes any sense to to anybody listening, you know, like you get you get this feeling that the movie wishes it wasn't that. Um, I think that happens with uh, a lot of game uh, to movie adaptations and and stuff like that. I love the fact that the D and D movie did not seem embarrassed to be what it was. It was. It was absolutely a D and D movie, but I also love that it didn't feel the need to like reference dice or or anything like that. Like, no, no, it was a D and D movie. You got the references. If you're a D and D gamer, you definitely uh, uh, felt like the movie understood, you know, the the um, where it was coming from, and and I like that. I like a movie that's not embarrassed to be what it is ah uh, but the okay 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 so uh 
Friday, we, uh, I, I had mentioned it to you guys on Friday that we were going to go watch a horror movie because we're going to go out with a friend of us on Friday that is not into fantasy and stuff like that. Um, so sad and questionable as that may be, you know, we've, we, we, we like her. <laughs> and so we went to watch the Pope's Exorcist. So, this movie poses a dilemma for us. Because this movie was really bad. <laughs> like, this movie was not good. Just so bad. But I have this thing that when I go and I watch a movie, when I get home, I actually like checking out reviews and stuff like that you know i i enjoy checking out reviews of the movie you know um seeing what bad as in funny bad or just bad we i, I guess we laughed a couple of times so if if you got nothing else to do and you just want to go to the movies simply because you want to go to the movies? Um, no, no. <laughs> Actually, no, don't. Uh, uh, this is a Sunday afternoon with absolutely nothing else to do movie, right? Like this is this is that. Right? This is okay. I've got nothing else to do. I'm too lazy to get off the couch. I can't find the remote. Um, guess I'm watching the Pope's Exorcist, right? That, that's, that's this movie. But here's what, what really baffles me about this movie, which really, I mean, I guess this is not news for anybody, but I am every single time more and more amazed at the disconnect between movie critics and 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 well i guess i'll just speak for myself but i am more and more amazed at the disconnect between film critics and what i find to be good or not because when I got home, I was very, very curious. I was like, oh, you know, let's let's uh let's see what what the critics thought about this movie. And they love it. They love it. Now, first of all, okay, let, let, let me let me give you a little bit of a Okay, you know what? Moving forward, spoilers for the the Pope's Exorcist. Um, now, I, I am of the opinion that if I spoil the movie for, for you, I actually just saved you a few bucks, which you can don't, which, you know, you can donate or whatever to me. Um, but, okay. So, the movie is about a single mother with, okay. Now, let's see if I managed to get canceled today or not, okay? Okay. I am 43 years old. Um, I would never... Okay. I am 43 years old. I hate children. And everybody knows this. But I would never enact violence against a minor. I, I, I actually think that is probably illegal. But we all have to admit that every now and then we see a child that our mind just goes, fuck, I wish I could kick that child's ass. Like, like just... I, like... I, I, I immediately hate this kid 
and I wish I, you know what? I wish I was 30 years younger so I could go and just kick that kid's ass. No, 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 no. I hate 100% of children. Not 95%. I hate 100% of children. But I don't see every single kid and just feel like this inner rage of like, oh my God, I wish it was morally and ethically okay to punch him. That is the kid in this movie. Seriously. I'm, I'm watching this movie. I'm sitting there with people in the theater. This kid walks into the scene and I'm like, Oh my God, That I need to kick that kid's ass. I need to wait 10 years for that kid to be of age so I can go look him up and kick his ass. And I'll be 50 something by then. So I don't, I don't know, you know, I, I, but I, oh my God, like this kid really, like I spent the entire movie just wanting to punch this kid. And and it's not even because of anything they do. Because, again, spoilers, the kid gets possessed, like, just right away. Like, like, like there is no time was wasted in possessing this kid. He gets possessed immediately. But, but, I, I just wanted, like, like, I just really wanted to, to hurt this child. So, so, yeah, you know, I, I guess we can now proceed on to my cancellation or whatever, but. But, um, so anyway, kid that desperately needs me to punch him, uh, is the son of, uh, so it, it takes like place, I think in the eighties or something, the eighties. So anyway, it's this, uh, single mom, which is not really relevant, but the movie does kind of, it, it is kind of like, a like a film trope at this point that that you know families in these movies are kind of rare yeah no no okay i mean it is a family but you know what i mean like like uh um you see a mom in a horror movie and you can almost right off the bat just okay how did your husband die uh, um and of course he did he died in a car crash and so apparently Dad died, and all he left us was, uh, very, very oddly, um, a religious, um, like, like, uh, um, like the dad dies, and what he leaves his wife and kid is like this religious, like this abbey in Spain of historical significance, and like. Do, do people really, like, inherit these things? <laughs> like, like, the whole premise of the movie is Dad died and he lay, he left us, like, a church in Spain of historical significance. Like, really? O oh, okay. So, Mom and the family move there because apparently uh, they got no money left. So, now they have to move there. And they got no money left, but for some reason, they are paying for all the repairs on this place. Which is, by the way, a ruin. Yeah, but how are they paying for it? <laughs> With future money. So. Oh, by the way, you guys probably didn't hear that Pew said. <laughs> that, that they're planning to sell it. So anyway. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Kid goes down to the basement, sees something there, and immediately gets possessed. Because, of course. Uh, naturally, they have a teenage daughter, and of course, she a bitch. And I don't mean this like in a mean, misogynist way. Like, no, the movie presents her like this is a, a, a teenage bitch. Like, this is just a mean... Uh, like, like, yeah, she, she's a mean girl. She's a mean girl. Of course, none of them want to be there. Naturally, because you know what happens in movies. You know what happens in movies to children when there's a traumatic event in their lives. We can all say it together. When kids have a traumatic event in their lives in a movie, they lose the ability to talk. That That's like what happens to children in movies. Like if 
you know, um, in movies, that's how kids deal with trauma. They just become mute right away. And that's what happens to this kid. He hasn't spoken in a year. Uh, so... So anyway, uh, the kid goes down to the basement, sees something. The movie doesn't really show us what. And kid is immediately possessed. So there's an exorcist in the Vatican. Hurry back, Sorina. <laughs> so there's an exorcist in the Vatican. And he's Russell Crowe. Now, I don't speak Italian. Uh, I know I, I know Voltus is Italian, but I don't know if Voltus have seen this movie. I want Voltus to watch this movie. Now, why do I want Voltus to watch this movie? Because I want an Italian to tell me about Russell Crowe's Italian, right? I, like, I want an Italian, a genuine 100% Italian, which I'm sure, you know, Voltus is. He, he smells like pasta and everything. Um, I want Voltus to watch this movie and tell me Either that is the worst Italian I've ever heard, or holy crap, Russell Crowe speaks perfect Italian. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and guess that he doesn't, but I don't know. Maybe he does. You know, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe maybe it's like holy crap, like is Russell Crowe from Italy? I don't know. Uh, but of course, I can't evaluate the Italian that Russell Crowe speaks because I don't speak Italian. So uh, Russell Crowe speaks Italian. And the movie has this thing where it's like, I'm, I'm just thinking, why the fuck didn't you guys just make the entire movie in English? Like just, you know, the classic American movie where no matter where you go in the world, the people are going to speak English because we're making it for an English speaking audience. What is wrong with that? It's, it's not a problem. It's not an issue. Just have them speak English. No. In this movie, Russell Crowe speaks Italian. When he speaks English, he tries to do an Italian accent, which, again, I want an Italian to evaluate. And uh, they just they, they try to justify English like in, in a weird kind of storytelling way. So <laughs> the demon that is possessing the child decides that he's gonna speak in English like that's that's like that's the thing but not just that at the beginning of the movie of course there's like a mini possession like basically they show Russell Crowe going to some poor place I don't remember where and doing an exorcist there and there's another guy that's supposedly possessed and he's also like the demon also just decides that he wants to speak in English. So apparently in this world, uh, demons just, yeah, they, they just do English. So, so yeah. So, so you know, Russell Crowe comes and faces the, the English speaking demon. And so of course, you know, possession movie, the entire movie is like, uh, the demon possesses this kid, and Russell Crowe has to deal with it, along with another priest that is from Spain, and of course, speaks English. I don't think we ever hear him speak Spanish. But like, like the, the whole movie takes place in Spain, and there's only one moment where they speak in Spanish, which is uh, a moment that they go to a hospital, and that's it. Other than that, you don't really hear Spanish throughout the entire movie. Um... Uh... Although I do appreciate that they didn't fall into the typical trope of Spanish-speaking individuals in movies, which is that the Spanish-speaking priest did not spontaneously burst into uncontrollable Spanish, which I hate when movies do. Uh, but then again, that also only seems to apply to Mexicans, not to... Uh... No, 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 they also apply it to, Sp to Spaniards. You know, you know, with your typical, like... Yeah, yeah, movies have this thing that I don't understand that apparently... Okay, so there's a movie rule where if you are from somewhere else, you must curse 
in your native language. Apparently, when you are a foreigner in the U.S., you are not allowed to curse in any language other than, than your native language. Like, they will speak English the entire movie, and then when it comes to cursing, they, ah, joder, and, and then go back to English, and then, coño, tío, and then back to English. And, and, and Mexicans will be just English, 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 la chingada, and then English. It's like, I, I can curse in English. It's, it's not, this isn't difficult. It's probably the first words you learned anyway. Um, so I don't know why we have to spontaneously curse. Like, like, like and, and it's not just Spanish. It's any single language. If you are a foreigner, you must curse in your native language. You cannot curse in English. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's just an observation. Uh, anyway, so the thing is, they are trying to, to exercise this demon from the child, but it seems that this Abby, which again, I remind you, was owned by this woman's husband who, like, we don't even know who he was. Why Why did he own this place? I don't know. Uh, I don't know why he owned this place. But here's the thing. Back in the Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition, which nobody expects. Um, back in the Spanish Inquisition, this place was very, very important. Because they dealt with a possession in this abbey. And they could not exercise the possessed. So they built an underground place to just keep the possessed person there. To keep the demon there. They just keep him in the bait. Like they literally just decided we can't get rid of this demon. So we're going to keep him in the basement. I am not exaggerating. That is what happens like, that is the backstory of this abbey. That back in the Spanish Inquisition, there was a demon they couldn't get rid of, so they keep it in the basement. And the exorcist in charge, at the time, just places himself in a cage in front of where the demon is to make sure he cannot, like, the demon cannot get out. And to me, it's like, Okay, all good, whatever. Why does some random dude own this place? In the like, wouldn't the church keep this place? Like, th don't tell me that. Like, at some point between the Spanish Inquisition and now, the church was tight on money and had to sell this place or something like that. Why was some random dude in the you? No, no, they they explain nothing about this dude. Like, he's not like. Like, oh, no, no, the kid's dad was Jesus or something. Like, no, no, nothing like that. Just some random dude in the U.S. owns this place. And when he dies, he leaves it to his wife and children. Like, w what is the justification of this? Are you telling me that at some point during the, between the Inquisition and now, the church was, like, tight? Like, they didn't have cigarette money? And they sold an abbey in Spain or something like this? Like, Why? Why is there suddenly a, an abbey in Spain owned by some random dude in the U.S.? But, okay, whatever. So, uh, so the movie kind of goes in between the whole idea of Russell Crowe performing this exorcism and kind of uncovering the secret of the abbey. And eventually, um, because you know how it is, like, I don't know how much you guys have watched uh, possession movies and stuff like that, but there's always a rule in possession, and it's that you can't exercise a demon if you don't know its name. And I've always thought that demons in these movies are always such idiots, because you figure demons know this, right? <laughs> like, it's... Not like demons in hell don't know that if you know their name, they... 
I, I don't know. I, I, I actually would be curious to know where that comes from. Like, where this whole thing of, like, you have to know the demon's name to get rid of it. Like, where does that come from? I, I'm curious. But, again, you'd figure demons would know this, right? Like, it's not, it's not like demons haven't been able to figure out why they're getting exercised every single time. Like, you, you know that demons know this, right? Especially because in all these movies, at the beginning, the demon doesn't want to say their name. Like, this always happens. The demon doesn't want to say their name because they know that that gives the exorcist power over them. But somehow the exorcist always manages to get the demon's name out of the demon. Like, and, and here's the other thing. Even I know the names of the demons. And I'm not Catholic. I know the names of the demons. Beelzebub, Asmodeus, Belfegor, Satan, Lucifer, uh, I already said Asmodeus, uh, I, I, um, uh, shit, uh, the goat one. Remember the goat one? Uh, uh, Baphomet, um, but like the and and these people have lists of these names, right? Like like you can even look it up on the internet. Now, of course, the movie takes place in the eighties, but you know, demon names are from before the eighties, right? Like, like if the if the way to exercise a demon is to just say the demon's name and the demon will react to that, and why don't you just? Get a list of demons' names, sit in front of the demon, and just start reading off the names until you get the one that, that's going to make him react. Like, okay, Stephen. No? Okay, not Stephen. Okay. Um, Frederick. No? Okay, not Frederick. Uh, Baphomet. Oh, 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 you're Baphomet. I see it. I see it. So, like... There are, no, and I mean this, like, I'm not even joking. There are legit lists of demons' names. It, this isn't, like, an eternal list. Like, there's, and and here's the thing. In the movie, at a different point of the movie, they mention that there's 200 of these. That there's 200 demons that are the fallen angels and that they all inhabit the earth. So this is one of those 200 demons. So you know they have the 200 names of the 200 demons. How long does it take to just sit down and read off 200 names? Like that doesn't, if you read it fast, it'll take you five minutes at the most. You just sit down and go, okay, Stewie, Stevie, Frankie, Louie. Ah, gotcha. Okay, Louie, that's one down, 199 to go. Which, by the way, is relevant because that's kind of how the movie ends. I'll get there. Yeah, yeah, like, like, look it up on YouTube. Like, like, okay, let's look up uh, a list of demon names on YouTube, and 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 we'll just, you know, take it from there, right? <laughs> like, like, hey, you know, I'm gonna go for lunch. We're gonna read. Um, you listen to this. I'll be back anyway. Okay, so. So, while the demon is upstairs, like, just wrecking that family's shit. <laughs> oh, they could have the demon name song. And all the exorcists have to learn it. All the exorcists have to learn the demon name song. <laughs> you go into an exorcism, you just rap it to them. Like, yo, 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 what up? And you just... Bam, start rapping the 200. Holy shit, we need to make this song. This has to happen. We have to make the demon name rap. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this when I have free time. So you can expect this in 2030. Um, the demon name song. And it's a resource for exorcists. You just go in, you rap all their names, see which one hits. This, this is why... See, this is why I'm not Catholic, right? This is why. Because, like... They've been battling this for 2,000 years. You'd, you'd think you'd think at a certain point they would have figured this stuff out, but no, 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 no. 
But anyway, so, um, so yeah, they're down in the basement checking this thing out. And, and again, spoilers. So if you don't want me to spoil who the demon is, stop listening. Like, um, they, they find a book and in the book, it says that the demon that they're fighting is Asmodeus, the king of hell. Which, okay, granted, Asmodeus is a pretty powerful demon. He is one of the princes of hell. He's one of the seven princes of hell. And he is the demon of lust. So, by the way, the movie doesn't say this. I just know this. Um, but yes, Asmodeus is the demon of lust. That's the demon we're dealing with. Okay. So they run back upstairs where the family is just getting their shit wrecked. And, and what happens then is that, uh, well, no, Asmodeus is too powerful. Asmodeus is too powerful. He, you know, we cannot exercise Asmodeus. He's just too way above our heads. So they do the typical one. They do the typical thing. Uh, Russell Crowe goes, possess me. And I'm like, oh, really? So... What it turns out happened is that the demons had a plan. And the plan, which was the plan that they had back in, you know, the Inquisition, was that they wanted to possess uh, a priest. And in possessing the priest, they would make it back to the Vatican and... And... and infiltrate the Vatican. So what Asmodeus wants is to possess Russell Crowe and go back to the Vatican and infiltrate the Vatican. Which, again, it's like, aren't demons supposed to be smart? They know they sent Russell Crowe to do this. Like, it's not like Russell Crowe disappeared one day and then shows up on Thursday. Hey, sorry, guys. But like, like, no, they, the Pope knows. He's the Pope's exorcist. The Pope knows what he sent him to. Like, do you really think that possessing the Pope's exorcist and going to the Vatican is just your, your, is that your play? Is that really like your, your move? It's a stupid plan, Asmodeus. So, yeah, yeah, it's like, it, it's just not a good plan. So, but that is the plan. So, apparently that's what the demon was doing during the Inquisition all those years ago, and that's what the demon wants to do again. So, uh, he possesses Russell Crowe, and, and here's what happens. The family, which we have been seeing... By the way, if I didn't mention the family, like if I haven't mentioned much about the family, it's because we see the family the entire movie. And Russell Crowe tells the demon, like, get out of the gate and possess me. And so the demon does that. And Russell Crowe turns to the family and says, like, you guys run away. And they run out of the abbey, get in a car... And drive away. And we never see them again. Like, this is, like, like that's it. Like, they mention them, like, in the epilogue. Like, in the epilogue, they say, like, oh, yeah, the family's been relocated. And they're like, oh, good. And, and that's it. Like, the family that we see the entire movie, the family that arguably the movie is about, Russell Crowe just tells them, run away, save yourselves. They get in a car and they drive away and we never see them again. Like, no conclusion to this. At the end of the movie, I'm skipping ahead, but at the end of the movie, Russell Crowe is walking with, like, his boss, and his boss says, oh, yeah, the family is okay, and they were relocated. And he's like, oh, good. That's it. But, like, that's the conclusion. So, Russell Crowe gets away, and the Spanish priest goes after him into the basement. And so what happens then is that the, the, oh, wait, I, I needed this. Okay. The Spanish priest goes after him into the basement and Russell Crowe is now sitting on a throne 
in front of a pool of dirty water. And so one of the points that the movie makes is that Russell Crowe feels guilty because there was this one woman that uh, he had to exercise, but he determined that she had uh, a mental illness instead. So he refuses to deal with her and instead refers her to a psychiatrist, which at that point, I'm not enjoying the movie. Well, I mean, I'm enjoying it in that it's funny how bad it is, but like, you know, I'm not, I'm not into it. But at that point, I'm like, well, I mean, that that's, that's good. You know, that we're touching on the whole fact that like, yes, you know, uh, uh, a lot of these people, all they needed was medical attention not necessarily an exorcism and it's cool that they show that this exorcist would do that but the movie actually makes it out to be a bad thing and russell crowe at no point goes like hey i'm not a psychiatrist because he's not but so anyway his guilt is that he at some point had this woman that thought she was possessed but she wasn't possessed she just needed psychi psychiatric help so he refers her to a psychiatrist and his guilt is that he did not uh, like, pay more attention to her. Which, again, you're not a psychiatrist. That wasn't your job. You referred her to a psychiatrist. What else could you do? Well, the mo the woman commits suicide. I, I think I can't say that on YouTube. I have, I have under good authority that you can't say that on YouTube. So, let's just say it that way. And Russell Crowe feels guilty about it. Her name is Rosaria. And uh, the Spanish priest, whose name, uh, was it Thomas? Was his name Thomas? Uh, anyway, Spanish priest, he's guilty because he's fucking a girl. Like, he's feeling guilty because he's fucking a girl. So, the whole thing is that, supposedly, the demons use your sins against you. Well, the movie does it very literally. Russell Crowe is in the basement, sitting on a throne... Spanish priest comes down and he's like, I want to help you. And suddenly out of the water, his lover, but covered in blood, attacks him. And so he has like this exorcism coin. I'm not, I'm not shitting you. There's an exorcism coin. And he just like, like does like a, like a pat. I remember Pew said, like, are they the Power Rangers now? Because the guy literally takes the coin and goes like, that, like he puts it in front of him like he's a power ranger with his ring and so he explodes the girl and then russell crow gets attacked by uh rosaria and they do the same thing they like they 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 like seriously like join their powers or some shit and explode the 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 manifestations of their guilt which which, by the way, the entire movie is like, because there's one thing that, like, at one point, the demon is like, like, yeah, I'm going to use, it. like, seriously, like, Russell Crowe is talking to the demon, and the demon is like, I'm going to use your sins against you, and Russell Crowe is like, nah, bitch, because I confessed, so I'm forgiven, you got nothing on me. Like, is that how that works? <laughs> like, you could just do whatever you want. And then go confess and, like, hell's got nothing on you? Huh. Didn't know that's how that worked. Okay, cool. So now, you know, I mean, the more you know. So, but then the demon's like, nah, bitch, still got you because you confessed your sins, but you still feel guilty. So, got you there. And it's like, oh, shit, he's got me. You guys really need to kind of get your story straight. Okay, so 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 does confessing actually absolve you of your sins? Or if you confess, you get absolved, but if you still feel guilt, if you still feel bad, basically. So the only way confession would work is if you confess, but after that you just don't give a shit anymore. Like that's that's the only way it would work, it seems. So at this point in the movie, uh, they explode both their demons. They kind of decide that they work well as a team. And they go back to the Vatican. 
and here's where it get like here's where it gets even funnier. They go back to the Vatican, and that's where uh, they meet up with the Pope. Which, by the way, I don't know what Pope this is supposed to be. It's, I, I think in the eighties it was John Paul II, but that's not John Paul II. So fictional Pope. Which is funny because the movie is supposed to be based on real events, of course. Um, but, so, like, oh, right, right, right. His name is uh, Amarth, Father Amarth. Uh, so he's supposed to be based on an actual uh, uh, exorcist. But the Pope is, is not, like, the Pope is, I don't know, Stand in Pope or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the deal with the Pope is, but that's not the Pope. Um, so he's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, go talk to your new boss. And like, you know, we need you to continue doing exorcisms. Okay. And here's where it just like the whole movie was off the rails. But in the final minute of the movie, the movie just completely goes off the rails and into uncharted territory because here's what happens. The whole movie is like in this ruins of an abbey with like priests and exorcism and it's ridiculous, but it's like within the like thing that they got going on there. Once they make it back, because he takes he takes the, the, the Spanish dude with him. Because they decided that they make a good demon fighting team. And so they go and they meet the Pope in this Vatican chapel. And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, you guys uh, make a good team. Uh, go talk to your new boss. And suddenly they're in like this underground bunker slash secret headquarters filled with like computers and technology and shit. And the guy is going like, yeah, you guys got rid of one demon, but remember that it was 200 demons that that fell, sorry, 200 angels that fell from heaven. And now they're like standing in front of a map and the ma like, oh, yes, the, 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 the journal we found in that basement has the location of the other 199 demons. And so the guy's like, oh, yeah, but, you know. We need, we need somebody to fight them. And so basically the movie ends with Russell Crowe and Spanish Priest deciding that they are going to be a team of demon hunters and going to go for the other 199 demons. And like that, that is the end of the movie. Basically, yes, Pope Exorcist Cinematic Universe uh, uh, is, is the end of this movie. It, it it like I am not even exaggerating. That is how the movie ends with the Pope's Exorcist cinematic universe being teased because now they're gonna go fight the other 199 demons. Like like I didn't see that coming either. <laughs> that was very, very unexpected for the end of this movie. But that's how it ends. That is seriously how it ends. It ends with with them saying like, okay, we got 199 demons to hunt. Here we go. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of the movie. And... Here's the thing. Father Amorth, Amort, Amort, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. I, I mean... Bullshit or not, the guy did actually exist. Like, like Father of uh, Amor did exist. He he was an actual person. And this movie is based on like his stories of what he thinks actually happened in his life, hunting demons and stuff like that. I I am like Father Amor. Where's the story? I mean, he's dead now though. Uh. uh Where's the story of the other 199 demons? Also, first of all, you started off with with Asmodeus, the king of hell. 
like I, I I don't know who the other 199 demons are. I'm gonna look it up so we can make our demon rap song. But I'm pretty sure that the other 199 are not gonna be as badass as the king of the hell. One of the seven princes. So yeah, sure. You're gonna have uh uh Belfegor, Satan, Lucifer, Belzebub, um uh and the other two whose names i don't remember once you're done with those seven what are the other 193 demons like that's when we're gonna start finding like frank the demon of picking your nose and and cindy demon of wearing fake eyelashes that are way too long so they look weird in the wind but like like that's that, that's the kind of demons we have left. I mean, Asmodeus is the first one. After that, what do you got? Who is the Thanos of Hell? That, like, that's the thing. Like, like, you already fought the King of Hell. <laughs> like, after that, it's like... The janitor of hell, the hell receptionist, the the hell's consultant. <laughs> like, I mean, like you already got the king. So that is the Pope's exorcist, but it gets a little weirder for me. Why? Well, because as always, I got home and I checked out some reviews. Critics love this movie. Why? Like, like everybody, like they're praising Russell Crowe's performance, which is also pretty weird because again, I don't speak Italian, but even I think that that Italian was kind of iffy. Like, I don't speak Italian, but even I'm here thinking that Italian is kind of, I don't know about that Italian. I'm not 100% on that Italian, you know? So, so first of all, that. Uh, second, it's absurd. Like, why, why is this movie getting praise and all that kind of stuff? I'll save you the money and the trip. The movie has one interesting thing, and it's that when Russell Crowe goes to check out if well, okay. So at the beginning of the movie, when he's dealing with the with the first exorcism of the movie, it's not actually supposed to be a real exorcism. It's it's. It's uh, a guy that's faking it. You know, a guy that's just mentally disturbed. So he takes out his, his exorcism coin and he puts it in front of the demon and starts moving it. Like when doctors are, are checking your, you know, your reactions and nothing happens. And, and so, okay. Later in the movie, when he's dealing with the real demon, he does the same. And so they show that the person's eye is looking at the coin and at a certain point... Like, the demon's eye move underneath the person's eye to look at the coin. And so I'm like, that's interesting. I haven't seen that before. That's pretty cool. That's, yeah, I am I can get behind that. that. That's pretty nice. That is it. That's all the movie's got. <laughs> like, but like, like, other than that, the movie has all the typical, uh, tropes of of um exorcism movies like at one point uh, like here's something that happens in the movie at one point the demon possesses the teenage girl teenage girl proceeds to do this one thing while she's possessed stands in front of everybody breaks all her bones gets on all fours walks up the wall Hangs there for a moment, drops back down. The end. Like, she's not even attacking anybody. She's not running from it. No, she just kind of does a demonstration. Like, oh, look, I can do this. And <laughs> goes up, falls down. The end. Like, like for no reason at all. I'm like, well, I mean, if you've seen one Exorcist movie, you've seen them all. <laughs> like, basically. Oh, 
Okay, wait. So, yeah, uh, overall, not great. Not great, no. But then, on Saturday, we went to watch the Mario movie. Holy crap, is that movie fun. Like, I have... I honestly have nothing bad to say. Did, did I Did I have anything? I guess... Like, that movie is so much fun. I have honestly nothing bad to say about the Mario movie. It is just... It's, it's honestly some of the most fun I've had. Uh... Uh, watching a movie in a long time it is absolutely i love the humor in the movie i, I love the humor in the movie the, the humor in the movie is great um it's just it's just a fun movie uh and if you have at any point in your life enjoyed mario this this movie is is made for you this is this is 100% a movie that's like, hey, look, you love Mario, we love Mario too, let's enjoy Mario together, the end. That, like, that, that is this movie, 100%. There is absolutely nothing in this movie that made me go, like, like oh, that's too much, or, or I don't like, no, no, no. It's just a fun movie all the way, start to finish, um... Every single thing in the movie is fun. The music is great. Uh, the nostalgia is there, but the movie has also got like its own thing going on, so it's not entirely built on nostalgia. Just great movie. Absolutely awesome. Uh, absolutely do watch it in English, though, because the voices are great, especially Jack Black. Jack Black is just, um, Jack Black is just phenomenal in the movie. He's just great. Um, but yeah, that that's the Mario movie, really. It's just it's a fun movie. Jack Black as Bowser is just is just great. Like like it's just this fun character that uh yeah it's, it's just some it's just a fun character that's like kind of ridiculous and and all that kind of stuff it, it's just so much fun and and like i said if you if you have if you have if you like, most people have played most of the essential Mario games, right? Like, we're talking, okay, uh, if you played Donkey Kong, Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 2, Mario Brothers 3, Mario World. I'm pretty sure there was a reference to Sunshine, but I didn't catch it. So, but there it is. Mario 64. Wait, actually... 64 was before Sunshine. Uh, Luigi's Mansion. Uh, Mario Galaxy. And uh, Mario Odyssey. If you played any of those games, or all of them, because that's the thing, it's not really that difficult to find the person that's played all of them. The only one I haven't played is uh, Sunshine. And I even, I, I saw the game where let's play of it, so... You know, it's good enough. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you you just you you see all these things, and if you like like me, grew up with Nintendo, uh, you you watch this movie, and every five seconds you're going, oh oh, look at that, Escorce, hello. But that but that's the thing like Mario is so much a part of popular culture that 
you don't even need to have played all the games to kind of get it, right? Like, like you just get it. Like, yeah, it's Mario. We get Mario. Mario's Mario is not a difficult character to 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 identify and understand, right? Like, it's it's part of pop culture and part of you know most of our lives growing up. And I'm not even a Super Nintendo fan. No, I am a Super Nintendo fan, as in the Super Nintendo. But I'm not a Super Nintendo fan, as in, like, I'm not super into Nintendo. That was a very mixed up way of saying what I needed to say there. But 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 I, I'm sure I made my point, right? Like, But yeah, even somebody like me that's not like huge into Nintendo, even I had like a bunch of stuff to enjoy in that movie. It was just a great movie. And then on Sunday we saw Jumanji. Which was also great. I mean Jumanji's great, so no. Have you have you watched Jumanji lately though, Mo? When was the last time you saw Jumanji? Oh, okay, okay, that's pretty recent because Jumanji's pretty rough now. <laughs> like it's it is it is not like I, it does not look good anymore. Like, that movie is... Like, part of the fun watching Jumanji was us constantly going, Oh my god, that looks horrible. Like, that was just half of the movie for us. Like, those monkeys. Oh my god, those monkeys in Jumanji are just... Like, you can't even be angry at it, really. I mean, like, like yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, what did you decide about uh, yoga? Okay. Any reason or just lazy? Uh, okay. Thank you, Pew. I got my uncle. Oh no, the, the movie is still charming as as fuck. Like the movie, the movie is still very enjoyable. Uh, all the characters in the movie are or yeah you know fine Jumanji gave you nightmares as a kid? 
Uh, the bats and the kid getting sucked into the board game. I think that's the part that made us laugh the most. No, actually the part that made us laugh the most was the spiders. Did the spiders scare you as a kid? You think all of it scared you? <laughs> okay. Have you seen the new Jumanjis? With The Rock and Jack Black and... Hmm. Yeah, they, they are way better than... Than I thought they would be. They're they're way way better than than I thought they were gonna be. Edmox, you are one hour and a half late, but don't worry about it. Oh, you did miss a lot, though. Uh, I reviewed a movie. So, yeah, you missed. You missed the movie review. I reviewed the the Pope's Exorcist. Enjoy, Ma. Yes, Gladi. No, no, but he's not the Pope. He's the exorcist. The Pope is is, is his boss. Like it, it, Russell Crowe is not the Pope. The Pope is some other dude. Anyway, long story sh short, it sucked. Don't waste your money. But um, I did see the Mario movie. We were also talking about that. Uh, I loved it. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, right. Yeah, you, you did see it, but you saw it in Spanish. Because, because Spain. But I did watch the Mario movie. We loved it. You all you watched it twice and both times in Spanish? Man. You watched it in Espanol Latin. Wait, so you managed to watch a different version of Spanish, but not English. <laughs> like, not English. Oh, man. Well, let's hope it comes to streaming soon so you can watch it in... Yeah. 
in the language it's meant to be watched. I don't see it coming to streaming soon, any, uh, though, because the movie's doing very well, so. Well, I, I don't think it's going to be coming to streaming anytime soon. That would be a... When it does come to streaming, however, I can see it being a huge hit because that's definitely a, a movie that people are going to play for their kids to keep them to get them to shut up for the afternoon. Mario movie in Russian. That's a that's got to be that's got to be fun. Have you have you ever seen uh Russian Mario? Because that that's a thing. Like the, there's like a like a video game parody of of Russian Mario, it's it's so much fun. It's... Yeah, yeah. There's there's a uh... there's Russian Mario. <laughs> I mean, th this isn't like a legit Mario, right? Right? Like this. Oh no no but but I mean I mean this is like a parody. This isn't like like one of Mario's suits. <laughs> that would be hilarious though. You get you, you don't get a mushroom I I if I if I'm not mistaken in the Russian Mario version you get like potatoes or something like that. I I don't remember that much. I know it exists because I remember did I see it on Game Grumps or something? That might be the case. I might have just seen it on Game <laughs> But I swear, this is a thing. Like, I didn't make it up. They didn't make up Russian Mario. Cat Mario is a parody? But... But there... But there is a Cat Mario. Like, but you turn into Cat Mario in... In, uh... In one of them. He even shows up in the movie. Uh Wait, wait, wait. Russian Mario. Uh Yeah, yeah, if you Google it or, or YouTube search it, you'll find stuff with Russian Mario. Came out in the Wii U Mario game. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cat Mario. Yeah, he's even in the movie. So.
Okay, here we go. Um, so, Edmox, how's your week? How's your week? Well, I mean, th this question applies to everybody, but Edmox just came in, so, you know. But, but I suppose, yes, you know, every, everybody watching, how was your week? Although now that I say it that way, I guess nobody's going to want to say. Yeah, see, I, I knew. I knew that would happen. But I asked you about your week, Mao, at the beginning. Or do you want me to ask you how the past hour has been for you? All your bosses are on vacation? Why, Semana Santa? Ah, uh, well, Semana Santa strikes again. Okay, let's see. Mm. Okay, let's have some more buildings behind these. Okay. You're waiting for answers uh, or feedback from my freelance. Uh, is that like you've been waiting for a while or? Because I remember you, you mentioned that you were doing like some backgrounds for an animation, right? Is this book cover I'm making going to be split in half? Uh, well, you see, the thing is Mongoose has a... Um specific option uh sorry uh a specific way they show their covers i'm gonna show you um mongoose has a specific way that they do their covers so um it's easier if i just show you but here's the ebooks okay here we go and let's see them right here So here I have uh if you look at all the covers uh from Mongoose, like for example, here we have Aliens of Charted Space. And And uh, as you can see, they have like this area specifically where the cover goes. And all their books have uh, that format. 
So, um, so, so all my covers have to be in that format. It's a little limiting. Oh, by the way, I, uh, uh, I have exciting news because last week, um, oh, wait, wait. Creating a concept for a treehouse, and the people in production have no clue what they want. So I was shooting crazy ideas yesterday. I was up until 1 a.m. No, oh, I hope you get some good feedback, Ben. Phoenix, how did I start working with them? Who, Mongoose? Um, are you asking how I started working with Mongoose? Uh, I just sent them my portfolio. The end. Um, I saw, you know, I, I, I saw their product. I, I, I liked it. I sent them my portfolio. That was it. Yeah, it's 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 not really very exciting. I'm afraid, but that is actually how I get most of my work. I just sent my portfolio into places and and if they like it, they give me work. So um, anyway, I had exciting news. Because uh, last week, one of my clients actually posted. Uh, oh, thank you, Phoenix. I appreciate that. Well, last week, one of my clients posted one of the images that I did for them, which now authorizes me, first of all, to tell you about some of the work I've been doing over the past year, uh, over this year that I haven't been able to show you and I can show you what, but I can only show you that specific image. Anyway, uh, I'm very proud to announce that I have been working with Schwalb Entertainment and Schwalb Entertainment uh, are the makers of Shadow of the Demon Lord, which is, wait, I'm going to show you Shadow of the Demon Lord. I didn't work on Shadow of the Demon Lord though. Um, but Shadow of the Demon Lord is actually one very, very uh, popular RPG right now and considered to be like one of the better options uh, from D&D. &D. Like if you don't want to play D&D, &D, well, this is a much, uh, uh, a very, very good option. Uh, hey, Lula, what's up? Um, so this is Shadow of the Demon Lord. Now I'm working on their new book, which is called Weird Wizard. Um, and here's the article where uh, they posted the the image that I worked on. So I, uh, you know, that makes it cool for me to show you. Uh, I'll, I can only show you that image. I made another couple images, but that image I can show you. So yeah, yeah, th this is one of the, the jobs that I've been doing this year. Uh, and this is the image that I made. For, uh, this is that specific image. Okay, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't show the preview. Okay. So yes, that was a, uh, uh, that's a, a super, that's a, yeah, that's my favorite too. <laughs> that's actually my favorite. Um, I made another couple of images for them, but I can't show those ones. Mm. Because he hasn't shown them. But yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased that I can now tell you guys that I've been working with Schwab Entertainment. I, I hope to have more um, stuff I can show you guys soon. Uh, from other jobs that I've been working on. 
But, you know, for now, that one is definitely very satisfying to be able to share with you guys. How was your meeting, Sabrina? Okay, let's adjust the perspective here. We don't have to super define all this because we're going to put it out of focus in a minute. So, Actually, really good. We were going over the numbers from the few ads that are running. Really interesting to see what demographics are gravitating to certain things. More women are liking the curiosity cabinet than men, and men are liking the fishing image. Is there is there a link you can give us? But you don't have to if you don't want to. But, you know, maybe if you wanted to share a link to where we can check out this soft launch. Uh, but again, like, like only, only if you want. It's just on the socials right now. We have a few scheduled posts leading up to our announcement trailer. I see. Let's see. And you have an Instagram. Oh, okay. Oh, that's awesome. I feel a very uh, uh, warming sense of pride. And Time Pool, by the way, hello. How's the week going, time pool? We're not having any following to back this. I think it's doing well. Not Kelly Studios who have a publisher backing or a previous game. Uh well, you know, it's it's a it's a great time to be an indie uh right now. So I I think that there's a lot of uh You know, there's there's a lot of possibilities and stuff like that for indies right now. So I think it's a great time to be publishing an, an indie game.
I'll admit, I I miss working with video games. Uh, my experience uh, working before was not 100% good. But I do miss the, the, you know, working on a video game. Oh, that well. Uh, go ahead, Ed Max. What's your question? Um, will there be a challenge this Friday? I think I'll definitely be able to, um... Damn, when did a mosquito bite me? Uh... I, I think definitely Friday will be mine, as in I'll be able to do whatever I want for Friday. So yeah, yeah, I'll probably come up with a challenge for Friday. Sure. If, if you can... I mean, why? Will you be able to participate? Oh, that that's... I, I'm familiar with the feelings, Odin. I totally get it. Like, you know, the the whole recommend somebody, but oh, I really don't want to recommend anybody to you. <laughs> like, like, oh yeah, I totally get that. I want to participate. That sounds so like, I want to be a part of things. I want to be included. Don't worry, Edmonds. We'll include you. What's with the camera moving around? It just just show off showing off his telekinesis. That's Nvidia broadcast. Nvidia broadcast has um, an auto uh, auto focus thing where it will move to whatever it thinks should be the 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 subject in the image. Uh, He keeps wanting me to ask my art buddies his words. <laughs> your art buddies. Oh, all you art people with your, with your, uh, with your pencils and your brushes and your marijuanas. Uh, um, well, uh, the the thing is that I, I mean like I've actually I've actually been hired to do that before. It's just you you get paid, right? Like, but yeah, like I, I remember um, for a game called what was it? Was it Streamline or something that I did get hired to do fan art for the game? Um. Like that that's not uh uh that's not unheard of, you know. Um Oh no. Oh shit. Okay, wait. Made a mistake. When did this happen? I did not want you on the same layer. I'm gonna have to forcibly separate you. Yeah. No, I accidentally fused two layers that I should not have.
It happens. Okay, Ermux. Uh, yes, Time Pool. I did move back to Photoshop. See you Friday, Ermux. I did move back to Photoshop because... Um... I got a new computer and I could not get, for the life of me, I could not get Clip Studio Paint to feeling the way it was back on my old computer. So um, I had a lot of work to do at that moment, right? Like I was trying to get it to feel the way uh, uh, I needed for, you know, myself to work. And so, but I had a lot of work to deliver that weekend. So I said, okay, fuck it. We're trying Photoshop. And I did, and Photoshop felt just fine. So I had to work on Photoshop that weekend. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I've kind of been with Photoshop ever since because it's like yeah you know it feels fine it's working fine it's fine uh so i haven't really felt the need to get back into clip studio paint and it was very very easy to get photoshop to to kind of sync up again so so yeah i guess you know and to be honest like there's not much i've been missing uh from uh there's not much i've been missing from clip pseudo paint that that has made me think like oh man i really need to get back into photoshop like no no i've been I've been pretty much all right uh, moving from from clip to Photoshop. I have not felt any need to go back to it. Of course, there's, you know, commands and stuff that have been feeling a little bit out of place and stuff like that. You know, the, the your typical... Well, the, see, the, the thing is, when it comes to, uh, when, when it comes to using Clip Studio Paint, one of the things that, that like really kind of made me sort of consider certain parts of it is the fact that even when I was all good in Clip Studio Paint, I still have to use Photoshop, right? Like, like my clients normally want me to deliver stuff in PSDs. My clients don't want that. Like, I can't deliver CSP files to my clients. That's that's not gonna work. Like, like my clients still want PSDs in Photoshop. Admittedly, sorry, um, so objectively, Photoshop does have. Uh, better editing tools. So no matter how much I liked Clip Studio Paint, I always had to go back to Photoshop anyway uh, to, you know, do color grading and, and all that kind of stuff. 
Uh, so no matter how good things were with Clip Pseudo Paint, I always had to return to Photoshop anyway. I, like, I, I always... I, I never got to uninstall Photoshop. That's, that's just not going to happen. So if you're going to have to keep it around anyway... And also, like, yeah, I mean, Clip Studio Paint is there. I can I can have it whenever I want, but moving forward, it is going to be subscription-based. So, I'm sorry, Clip Studio Paint, but if I have to decide between paying a subscription for Clip Studio Paint or paying a subscription for Photoshop, well, my Adobe subscription... gives me way more bang for my buck. Like, uh, I, I know that the Clip Studio Paint subscription is cheaper than the Photoshop subscription, but my subscription to Adobe gives me the complete Adobe package for, honestly, a very, very reasonable price. And, and I get a bunch of stuff, right? Like, like there's just so much more uh, that I get from... From a subscription to Adobe. Especially if I ever get my shit together and I start doing YouTube videos. Because if I if I do finally get my shit together and start doing YouTube videos, then I'm definitely gonna want, you know, to be able to use uh, the other programs. Okay, so the thing is... Okay, I'm gonna need my fellow artist opinions here. Because the thing is, Sandrine said that the three ships in the background were a bit too much. So, that we should reduce it to two ships. Which, fine by me, but let's see, how are we gonna distribute this? What if we reduce them in size? Like, what if they were smaller? Let's see. Okay, wait, wait, let's get rid of that one. Actually, I think that location is, is fine. But, you know, this third ship kind of looks like a building when you put it that way. You know, like, like if, what if I were to increase size like that? Doesn't that look like a building in the background? I really kind of like that sort of building sensation that it's giving me in the background. What if I use that a little bit? Um...
Hmm. No, suddenly I'm not that convinced. Okay, so let's go back to... So yeah, the, the whole idea here is that... Is that this third ship is too much. Well, we can blur the ships out. Let's see how that looks. What if this one is like, oops, way smaller? Okay, let's put those together. And let's uh, give them that blur. There we go. I can actually grab that one now that it's all blurry. it a little bit oh wait okay and let's add a little bit. Where's the ship? Here's the ship. Okay. And here's the smoke for the ship. Let's add a little bit more smoke. Okay. Let's see. A little bit more smoke here in the back of this. Okay, now let's save, save a final version of it and do a little bit of color editing. Oh, we got time to spare it. Ugh, I, I keep saying that I have to remove that function from the, the computer, but I always forget to. Okay, so what we're going to do now is Okay, so now we have this final version. First of all, let's cut it up. Make sure there's nothing outside of that shouldn't be. Um, then we're going to reduce a little bit the size. Okay. Save that. Now we're going to get rid of layers we don't need. Uh, and we're just going to group stuff. Let's see. Okay, let's start grouping stuff, getting rid of stuff we don't need. Wait.
Okay, here, okay, I'm gonna, let's see. We have the three ships here. We can make them a little bit more visible. Maybe like that, a little bit. Okay, there we go. So here is our background. Okay, so we got, got our background right there. No, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's keep these things separate because I have them separate. And they're all kind of, Oops, <laughs> accidentally closed the file. Uh, here it is. Okay, so what I can do is if I have these there, I can bring them up top, but if I put them in lighted mode, then yeah, they'll keep the effect. That way, I can basically fuse that. Uh, I'm working on a character reference sheet for client right now, and it's going to kill me. One of these full three-angle sheets, and the character has doll joints to figure out on top of the... Yeah, character sheets is not... It's not the most boring thing you can do, but there's definitely... A lot of other ways I'd rather spend my afternoon. Okay, so that's going to be that layer. Here's the stairs. The ship should actually be behind the stairs. Then we got this light, then we got smoke and smoke here. Actually, we should add more smoke because, I mean, how is there no smoke here, you know? As long as we're not painting the ship, okay. Uh, okay. That, no, 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 no. We group that, unfortunately. Okay. Now, here is... Wait. And here's the ship. Can we fuse the ship? What's this? That's the ship. That's the landing gear. Okay. Let's fuse the ship. And here's the stairs. And a little bit of lightness to that. We'll put that behind the stairs. Okay. Here we have the people. And here we have... That's the layers of people separate that I still want to keep it. Okay, let's save that. And now I'm going to save another version. I do this a lot. Each one of my images is like 15 versions. And now we can edit the colors a little bit. So I'm going to grab... All of this up until here and copy paste there and put this in lighten mode now let's see what we can do with that maybe make a little bit of the clouds pop a little bit more give it some nice sort of shiny areas i think we also might need a little bit of soft light behind this is supposed to be a ship so i'm gonna do that just a little bit we'll lower the opacity in a sec something like that just to make sure it kind of differentiates itself and we got the ship then we got that light there and the stairs and the smoke and then the people Okay, and what I would want to do there is I want to grab all of this and do that again. 
Here's the people. We're going to put this again in light mode. And we're going to really make this one pop. Because what I want to do with this one is put it on top of this group. Wait, wait, we really want to wake this one up. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Invert that, grab this. We're just going to bring it around. Oh, that's too much. There we go. Kind of like some light sort of coming in through different parts of the image. Like so, you know, just kind of really make it. Sort of pop a little bit. And then what we can do is grab this, put it on top of that, limit it to that and take the characters cut them off from that and grab this and blur it. And that's going to give us like a nice sort of wait, let's zoom in. That's going to give us like a nice sort of feathering uh, around different parts of the image. Just kind of, yeah, that, see? Like here it is without it, with it. Like you get that kind of feathering right there. You kind of get that light filtering in. Then we got the characters right there. Um, I think... I think maybe we want to add a little bit more... Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, am I going to have to put the ship out of focus a little bit? I guess I want to try and see what happens if I put the ship out of focus a little bit. You know? Maybe not as much out of focus as the other parts, but the ship does... Too bad, though, because I love the ship. But I don't have to, like, super blur it. Just blur it a little bit. That little bit of blur, I think, does help bring the attention where I want it. Okay. Now... What if I were to grab these two, fuse that, disappear you. Okay, here we have the characters. Now what I can do is I'm going to give these a little bit more definition. Kind of make them pop out a little bit more. So we can do that by just increasing texture and clarity. And lowering blacks, increasing whites. Let's see how that looks. Now they got like this extra definition. That kind of makes them pop out a little bit more in my opinion. Oops. There we go. Okay. Fuse that. Now, let's play around with it a little bit. Uh, grab all that. Put it there. I always like, because I'm not, um, because I, I work with such desaturated colors. I like to use the neural filter that just adds color to it like this. It always adds like this wacky color to it, right? But then what I do is after I've done that, I simply lower it to like 11% or something. And then like, you can kind of see the difference. Like in how I, like this is how I did it. And this is how it looks with the little 
color filter on top. Which I believe kind of helps compensate a little bit for the fact that I normally just tend to mute all the colors. Night Cow, I still got 40 minutes to go, so we're good. And welcome back. Okay, now let's add color lookup. And this is where things can get pretty interesting because, well, hopefully it was already interesting before, but um, let's see. Do we like anything here? Fall colors, film stock. Foggy night, Fuji. I like. I always love these. Late sunset is. Something, something like this, and what I do is I'll just grab the characters and kind of fade them out of it like that. So we get this sort of muted look to the background that I feel kind of gives the background a very... <laughs> you got more work to do? Okay, I, I like it. I like this one. Of course, we can try... Uh, how about... Oh, no, no, no. Uh, how about Foggy Night? I love these, but it's so difficult. Oh, okay. What about this one? I love teal. I, I have to be objective. I do love the gray kind of... Like, yep. Yeah, it's not going to be a nice day. <laughs> but let's try it. Uh, okay. Just warm... No, I think I'm, I think uh, this one is giving me like a much more subtle kind of effect. Candlelight. Let's see. Candlelight. 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 I lost candlelight. Ah, here it is. Candlelight. Yeah, but but I'm afraid candlelight is muting the colors a little bit too much. Uh, and I I'm pretty sure they wouldn't go for that. Got my new showreel coming out next week. To need eyes on it for feedback later. Oh, yeah. I Absolutely. Now let's go with camera raw. Let's see. Give it a little bit more texture. We already did clarity, so we don't need to do that again. I'm gonna go. Uh, what if we increase blacks on it? I do love that makes it pop so much. Normally, I'll go for something in between that and what I had. And finally, last little magic trick. It's it's one of it's a thing I like to do a lot because it helps it look very painterly. And it's that you you grab the image like you have it right here, right? And so it's done. And what you do is you come here to filter, sharpen, and you just give it a sharpen filter. And what it's gonna do is everything is gonna like the brush strokes are going to look a lot. And sometimes if it doesn't do it enough, maybe the image is too big, you do sharpen more. And so as you see, like here you can see like the way it was. 
in the way it is now. And it just makes all the brush strokes look a lot more like brush strokes, right? Like this is one of my favorite characters in the image. And this is what it was looking like. This is what it looks like with Sharpen. So it just kind of really brings out the painterly feel of it. And now we sign it. Uh, I, I would guess this guy is the best place to sign it. Yeah, that that's I I don't even remember where I learned uh that trick. Uh but it was a neat trick that I learned uh, uh somewhere. <laughs> like you know how to make your images look like they have a, you know, get that painterly feel without you know, having to worry too much about it and that was kind of a trick and I I loved it. I I use it ever since. Of course, you have to apply it to your signature as well. Otherwise, it's going to call too much attention to itself. And that is that. Woo! Okay. Ugh. Okay, <laughs> we still got half an hour to go, so let's uh, close that and open one of the images we were working on. I want to go back to my experiment of uh, my line art experiment. So let's go back to that. Wait. What did I not save here? Okay, let's just say. Okay. Let's get back to this one to this one. I was having fun here. Thank you. I, oops. <laughs> you think her face is great? Let me ruin it. <laughs> That's almost what happened there. So I was watching some videos this week from a YouTuber. How do I do such night noses on characters? Um, wow, I, I never really considered my noses to be that good, really. Um, I mean, thank you, thank you. That that, but it honestly, catches me by surprise. Never really thought my my noses were that good. Um, uh, uh, but you know what I did? Uh, I I do have to admit though, night cow. Um, recently I did find something with the three quarter nose that, that sounds weird, but yes, the three quarter nose that did actually change a lot how I was doing my noses, right? Because so like you, you have the eyes, right? Like you have, you have the eyes. And so with the eyes, something that has helped me very much is not denying the eyelid, right? Like the eyelid goes... Uh, above and below as well and so you know we got the the nasal cavity and stuff like that and so the triangle for this part of the nose has definitely helped a lot with my um, facial construction right so so this part here has helped a lot but on the nose itself right like you know you you kind of 
acknowledging this lower part of the nose here, right? That goes, you know, th this under part of it. And so normally what, what I would do is I would just kind of do this part of the nose and we get the nostril and that's it, right? And what I found is that acknowledging the other side of the nostril, right? Like acknowledging the other side of the nostril, even though it's peeking through, really, I mean, I know it seems like something very simple, but it really kind of has helped bring, bring a, uh, uh, like level up my, my, uh, uh, facial construction game. So that, um, and, and yeah, like something as simple as just acknowledging the other side of, of the nose, um, kind of really changed a lot the way my noses feel. And it was just like a, I, I don't know, I think I even discovered it by accident. Like, I, I don't recall seeing it anywhere or anybody telling me, but, you know, I, I didn't discover it, of course, you know, because artists have known about the other side of the nose for centuries. But... But, yeah, you know, the triangle up here, like, acknowledging this part right here that, you know, the way it goes down there. And another thing that has also helped me a lot in um, building the face, um, which, again, just through experimentation, is also acknowledging that this part of the nose sometimes just slants down. It doesn't necessarily always uh, um, make a super big wall there like it slants down so and also uh on the uh like another recent thing is this part here of the of you know building the eye this this area here um that, that's another one that kind of gotta acknowledge Anyway, um, so I was watching a YouTube video. Let me, let me, uh, uh, ooh, that's flattering. Thank you, uh, Sabrina. So I recently followed a YouTube channel, um, I'm gonna recommend it to you guys, but this is more for people that like drawing, not so much painting, because this guy is absolutely a draftsman. Let me pause here and okay. So it's called Stephen Travers Art. Um now now keep in mind that I haven't explored the channel fully. I haven't uh really kind of a uh, um that, like I just saw a couple of videos and I liked what I was seeing, so I, I I subscribed. But you know, keep in mind that I don't know. It it might be good, it might be bad. Like I don't know. But what what I found was I really really like the way the guy draws because he's he's a draftsman, right? And he mostly focuses on real world scenery, which okay, you know, not really my jam, but whatever. But he does this incredibly detailed work. If any of you are checking him out right now, that's probably the first thing you're going to notice, that he does this incredibly detailed work. And he was talking about, uh, in, in the video that I saw, he was talking about how the, how the key to doing that detail is not so much detailing everything, but more about giving the sensation of detail. So that what he when he drew, what he would draw was not so much the detail, but the impression of detail. And that kind of makes everything look more detailed. Uh, he explains it 
pretty well in his video. Um, uh, but I thought it was a very, very interesting kind of take on things. And lately, I've got kind of this sort of, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling the light art lately, so... And you guys know me. I love detail, so... So, you know, what? why not, why deny ourselves the detail? Why not just, you know, uh, embrace the detail and, and learn to, to manipulate it, make it serve us. So, yeah, here we go. And yeah, you know, same stuff as always. Keep it zoomed out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what should we do on Friday? I'm into I'm into the idea of uh oh, we we should draw okay um I'm I'm um I'm into per, I'm into perhaps the idea of maybe a more technical challenge on Friday uh something like you know when we when we draw food and stuff like that, like like I'm I'm kind of into into that. Uh, Hmm, let's see. So for those for those of you that maybe uh haven't been here as long as others, um when I can, because I can't always, 
But when I can, on Friday, sometimes we do art challenges. And everybody's welcome to join, right? Everybody's welcome to join. We choose a topic and, well, not really I choose a topic, but, you, you know. And what we do is we all kind of spend the afternoon uh, taking on the challenge together. And then at the end, we see what everybody did, right? Um, so sometimes it's like just, you know, uh, a concept and we see what happens. Other times it's a more technical challenge. Like, you know, we're going to do texture work or we're going to do something you know, like that. Uh, how about hmm we could challenge ourselves to a color challenge, like the strawberries image. Hmm. A color temperature challenge. I like that. It's not too hard to do, but it is a little bit more difficult to explain to somebody that maybe is just going into the channel. You know what I mean? Like, uh, um, I mean, that wouldn't be hard for a lot of you to grasp because a lot of you are experienced artists that know what you're doing. But it might not be the easiest challenge to explain to somebody, you know, that's just getting into it. Um, question is, th does that matter? But I think we could do uh, an interesting uh, gray challenge, uh, an image that is only uh, an image that is only one color and gray, and that's it. But like, like if if we do that, right? Like, okay, we're we're gonna do a challenge. It's only you can only use one color and gray. The end. No, like nothing else. I do, I do want to experiment a lot more with colors. So I, I would absolutely love, yeah, we should do that channel, that challenge, because I want to experiment a little bit more with color because I, I want my colors to say more than just, you know, like, yeah, it, it's colored, but like, no, you know, I, I would love it if, if the colors I'm putting in my images said, and, and I feel that that kind of experimentation is is precisely what what gets you there right I want to feel more confident in my color picker brain. I spend way too much time trying colors out before picking one. I just want to know what is going to work. Yeah, yeah, that that that's the thing. Like that that kind of confidence is what eventually makes, you know, your, your color isn't just something that is well colored. It's a statement. It feels like 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 it's saying something. Like the color was really, uh, you know, part of what you're saying. Being a little bit redundant here but yeah uh 
and, and I, I feel like that is the kind of thing that happens with confidence, right? Like that, you know, you just you know what you're doing and you go for it. Um, Mao, Mao is definitely one that could. Uh, that that's interesting to watch in that regard, uh, because Mao's color is normally very purposeful. The, the way you say, Salina. Um, Yeah, yeah, I, I do think. Unfortunately, Maul doesn't seem to be here to listen to us singing his praises. So what a waste. <laughs> I think I think I think a lot of those things are are very circumstantial and opinion based. Uh, uh, I mean, of course, you know, right? Like, like you didn't need me tell you that, but but like I I, I think that definitely maybe. Chromatic aberration on everything is not is not great, especially because it's it's absolutely a trick, right? And 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 you know at, at a certain point it's like okay you know no more tricks let's just get down to what it is we have to do, but I don't really think that's a problem with with Mao's work in that regard. You know it's it's. We've we <laughs> I see what uh yeah, I don't really think that's a problem with Mao's work. I mean we we've seen him work. We know that it's just something that he likes the way it looks, so he uses it and that's it. And I think that at that point tricks are okay. I, I think tricks are definitely um dangerous when you just can't do without them right and, and that's where a trick becomes uh something that i would avoid well when it's just something like yeah you know i just like the way it looks and you know if i can't use it i don't the end i think it's fine When you got multiple jobs, do you plan days for individual tasks or are you like me, like jump between stuff till it falls into place? Uh no, no, I I plan. I I plan. It doesn't always work out, and I don't always plan. But when I got too much, like like when I feel like I'm I'm getting too much, um uh, I whip out the whiteboard or even in a notebook 
And I, um, yeah, and I schedule out. Uh, so for example, uh, today in the morning, I'm going to work on this image. And in the afternoon, I'm going to work on this other image. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to work on this image. Depending a lot on how your schedule uh, works, you distribute the time for each task. Uh, of course, that's definitely a person to person kind of thing. You know, uh, I think it's going to be different for each and every single person. Um, to me, I normally divide my day into, um, I don't like that hand. It's too blocky. Um, uh, uh, so I divide my day. I normally get up between 4 and 3 a.m. So I have one block of work that is from there to 6 a.m. And so that one, normally I work on one image, right? Then at 6 a.m., I normally, uh, let's say it's uh, uh, around 6, 6.30, right? Like this isn't like exact times. Uh, around this time, I go wake up pew. Uh, we hang out a little bit. We make our breakfast, stuff like that. And then I have, and, you know, we have the rest of the morning until 12. And that's, I normally work on another image if I have too many images to work on. And then after lunch until 6 p.m. or whatever time I decide to work on, I work on another image. Now, the reason I like doing this is because it allows me to fit other things into my schedule. So for example, um, if I work from here to here on one image, then maybe from here to here, I can go teach a class at the university and then from here to here work on another image. Uh, or maybe I can work from here to here on an image, from here to here go to the gym, and from here to here uh, work on an image and stuff like that. So I kind of do that. Uh, there's also simply that I, uh, because of how I am, you know, hyperactivity and stuff like that, I normally get very bored of an image very easily. So I like very much uh, it, it helps me very much to have several images so that i don't get tired of them as much uh my work day well no i wouldn't say it's a 14 hour work day because i don't work from 3 a.m to 6 p.m you know i stop for lunch i stop for breakfast, I take a shower, I, you know, we, we have our lunch and we kind of sit around for 20 minutes or half an hour. Maybe we take a little 20 minute nap. Uh, maybe, uh, also keep in mind that a lot of times I'm working on an image and maybe it'll be like, let's say I'm working on a minute on an image until, uh, until noon but a lot of times it'll be like okay it's 11 I'm, I'm done like like i'm not i'm not gonna work anymore and so i'll i don't know i'll uh, uh start up a video game and play until it's uh lunchtime or stuff like that it doesn't happen every day but it does happen so hey yuki so but at the same time there are i, I have to admit that there are plenty of days where i just um, like clock in and work solid, like Sabrina says, stopping only to eat. That, for example, was last Sunday. Like last Sunday, I no wait, we did stop to go for a walk. Yeah, because we're trying, we're trying to make sure that we exercise every day. Um, because it it has become very very clear to us that I am overdoing it. Uh, unfortunately, you can't just decide like, oh, I've been overdoing it. I can't do it anymore. Uh, no, you know, I have commitments. I have stuff that I have to do, right? Like I can't just decide, hey, guess what? I scheduled too much and I'm overdoing it. So I'm going to drop everything. Like, no, you can't do that, right? Like, like you got to, you, you, you have commitments and you have clients that are expecting this work for their book, not, you know, not delivering is just, a really asshole move. Um, 
So, for example, last Sunday, last Sunday, I I had to work um, like a, uh, an excessive amount. I, I got up early, pretty much worked all the way, stopping for lunch, and that was it. And what I did then was around four, we went for a walk. Like uh, we, we discovered that there's actually somewhere here close to where we live that is great for going on a hike. And we went for a little hour hike uh, up the mountain. It was actually quite nice. And got back at six, worked for another hour, and that was it. Um, and and like I said, you know, I I'm I'm aware that you know it's I've been overdoing it. One of the reasons, one of the ways you know that you are overdoing it is because you stop working not because you decided that's enough, but you stop working because you just can't can't go any longer, right? Like that. Like last Sunday, I told you like, okay, I'm gonna work until eight p.m. Um, and around seven, I was like, nope, I'm done. I can't, I can't, I can't continue. That is, is not like that. That's not ideal. <laughs> like, that's not what you want. Um, but, but I'm very big on, on responsibility in that regard. And I don't, right. Like I don't, um, You know, I, I don't, uh, I, I, I don't, uh, um, I, I wouldn't say I don't miss deadlines because that that's definitely happened before, but I absolutely don't leave my clients hanging, right? Like they, they, you know, they, they, they were paying for something, they were getting it. And if, if, you know, if, if I took on too much, that's my fault, not theirs. Um, because because I'm not I'm not a big fan of blaming the clients for that. Like you know, I'm the one that knows uh, how much I can do, right? So so if I if I took on more work than I should have, well, that's on me, right? I can I can tell my clients no. So we're working on it, right? <laughs> we're working on it. We're trying to 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 fix that part of me. That sounds weird, but yeah, we're trying to 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 fix that. But in the meantime, uh, we are definitely uh, one of the ways that we kind of figure out is is a great way to sort of counteract that a little bit is to at least make sure that we do exercise and. Um, we can't always go to the gym. So when we can't go to the gym, we decided that we'll go for a hike uh, around here where we live. And it's actually quite nice. Uh, gives me something to think about. I feel like I need to adjust my workflow to something more structure. Most of the jobs I get are by the hour. Fell behind last week because was not feeling your task. Your body rejects you. That's how I know you overdo it. I'm starting to feel physically sick. I get sick. I get sick. Like, like Pew always, <laughs> Pew always predicts it. Like whenever I overwork and overstress, I, I get sick. Um, I immediately get a cold. Like it's just, uh, and it, and it makes a lot of sense. You know, you're, you're, when you're under too much stress, your body's, uh, you know, immune system gets compromised and you end up getting sick and it's almost guaranteed almost like almost always after periods of intense stress for me, I get sick. Uh, my chronic pain keeps me overly in check. Now I overdo it one day. I may be incapacitated for the rest of the week. Speaking of hands, those, these are looking sick. Thank you. I, I was not happy with how they were looking before, so I, I kind of wanted to redo them, and I'm much, much happier with these.
So yeah, unfortunately, I really don't have the whole work balance figured out. Um, like that's yeah, definitely not. I don't have it figured out. There are some things I've managed to figure out. You know, getting up early, stuff like that. Yeah, that kind of stuff. I've, I've definitely managed to to figure out in my life how it works for me and and. You know, I've ma managed to find schedules that work for me and stuff like that. But balancing, definitely not. And it's very, very difficult for me right now to take a break. Like, I always feel super bad and, and anxious days that I'm not working. It just, you know. But hey, you know, we... There, there's time. To figure that out and look at that 502 speaking of breaks it's time for mine so uh that's gonna be it from me today uh i will be back on friday i like our idea for the um uh i like um sorry uh i like the idea for friday's stream which would be to make an image with just one color and gray. And that's it. Uh, I like that. I like it very much. So uh, I think that's going to be our art challenge for Friday. Make an image with one color and gray. See what happens there. See how it works out. Um, I'll post it on the on the Discord tomorrow. But for now, that's going to be it. Let's uh, let's check out what we made today. Let's. Uh, I mean, this was just me playing around here at the end because we had a half an hour to spare. But... Um, this was the image that we made today. This was the cover that we finished today. And I'm quite pleased with it. I'll be delivering it and we'll see how it goes. So yeah, Friday art challenge. Um, I hope you'll all join me then. And let's do the goodbye thing. So you have been watching the Ministry of Abnormality YouTube live broadcast. I've been your host, Oab Roman. Today has been Tuesday. April 11th of 2023. I will be back on Friday with the art challenge at the same time, and I hope you will join me. Until then, I thank all those of you that hung out with me today. Uh, you are always great company and great conversation. I will see you then, and I hope you have a very sexy Wednesday, a uh, good food Thursday, and I'll see you Friday. Good hunting, stay naughty, and goodbye. I look so red on the on the camera. Like I look so red. It's like s s someone is smacking me around during during the stream, and so I take off my glasses and I look at myself in the screen, and I just look like red. It's weird. Or maybe it's just my maybe it's just my impression. Maybe maybe I'm not red. It's weird that I look strange with no glasses because I don't normally wear glasses. So I take off my glasses and, and my glasses, my glasses, and you get like this millhouse effect. And nobody wants to be millhouse. That's not, no, nobody wants to be millhouse.